Hello, Aquaculture Tribe. I uh, hope you're all doing well and uh, uh, good evening. And today we will be talking about uh, sustainability uh, in aqua feed uh, with the focus on uh, ingredients and ingredient selection. So uh, let's uh, dive in in this topic. So I will uh, go through uh, the, the subtopics one by one. Uh, and of course, if there is some question, uh, please send me the email or uh, comment below. So let's uh, start. Yeah, so uh, so one of the main aspects when it comes to the uh, uh, ingredients, when you are selecting the ingredients for your uh, aquaculture feed, uh, you have to pay attention to the local ingredients uh, wherever you are uh, making your fish feed, for example, if you are making in Asia, you have to focus on your ingredients down there. In Africa, you have to focus about uh, your ingredients which are available in the local market and also uh, elsewhere. Uh, and uh, one of the challenge when it comes to the local ingredients is that some of these ingredients normally have uh, competition. Uh, with the human population. For example, if you are thinking about uh, wheat and corn, uh, or even in some cases, soya bean. So they are uh, somehow sometimes as uh, staple food for the humans. And uh, when, when, for example, you are willing to use these ingredients for your uh, animal nutrition purposes, for example, fish feed, so you're also uh, creating kind of uh, issue uh, for uh, the food security, but if you are uh, using too much wheat and corn and soybeans, so you're also like uh, making these ingredients less available uh, to the humans uh, in a cheap uh, possible way. So this is something we, we must avoid. So, so that's where the sustainability comes in. Sustainability is like uh, the way you efficiently use the resources uh, in an environmental friendly way in the long term perspective. So this is, uh, you should be keeping all the time in your mind that if you are selecting an ingredient, make sure that it does not have any competition with the humans. Uh, and of course, the price is an important factor. So it, 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 its price has to be uh, uh, in, a, in a manner that it don't make the whole feed uh, the, uh, too expensive. Uh, so this is one of the point uh, you must uh, have this in mind when you are keeping the sustainability as uh, the guiding principle uh, to make the fish feed uh, for yourself. So uh, another aspect uh, which of course we also have got some emails related to this. People, when they ask about different ingredients, can we use this and can we use this ingredient or that ingredient? So if you might have remember in the part one of uh, this series, in that animated videos, we discussed about uh, different ingredients in those, uh, uh, in that video. And uh, then, you know, uh, the, the, and uh, you might have remembered that there was some slide where I also put this uh, lots of byproducts. So l these byproducts, they are key uh, to sustainability. So more efficient use of the byproducts, uh, it could be from plant protein, it could be from animal protein uh, or other ingredients. All these byproducts, you have to maximize the use of byproducts to make it really um, you know, sustainable uh, because waste here waste is the is the key so more waste we have uh, and if we use it in an efficient way uh, the cost will go down uh, and of course it's good for the environment and uh, the uh, good for uh, the economy and so it's very important and uh, to use these resources in an efficient way uh, for example, I can give you the example. Somebody asked me, can they use this uh, blood meal? Yes, you can use blood meal. Uh, uh, somebody asked me that in the email in the, yeah, few weeks ago. So uh, blood meal is a nice example because some people think that blood meal is not really the safe ingredient. Of course, 
but you have to uh, keep in mind about the safety aspect when you are uh, using blood meal or the animal uh, byproducts in general. So you have to make sure that uh, you you pick them up fresh. Uh, you you use the process uh, uh, which is uh, certified according to your local authorities, and also have to think about the uh, salmonella and uh, uh, campylobacter or other foodborne diseases. So you have to. Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, so this is, uh, oh, but of course, these are really fantastic ingredients. Some of them have like the protein, 70-80% uh, uh, crude protein, for example, feather meals, which is really uh, easily available, is a poultry byproduct from, from the chicken production, and it's a highly uh, nutritious ingredient. So you have to uh, use these ingredients which are uh, available uh, rather than just looking after uh, fish meal or uh, soybean meal as the standard ingredient. So these are really the points you should consider. And, and if, of course, you have some challenges in this, uh, you can always reach me out and send me the email uh, or uh, post me the question. Uh, in other uh, uh, platforms. So this is some uh, one of the important point uh, I wanted to discuss. And then uh, there is another aspect. Uh, you, you should also have this in your mind when you are using these ingredients. Uh, so which fish, uh, fish species you have, for example, uh, you are making the diet for, uh, I'm just giving an example, for trout, let's say. For rainbow trout, you are making a diet, and then you plan to use uh, the byproducts or uh, some animal protein products. Uh, so in this case, you should uh, avoid using uh, uh, the product from uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the product waste from uh, trout itself, or even from uh, salmon itself, or the overall salmonite families. Uh, the reason is that if you will provide uh, the, the fish with such ingredient, uh, they might become uh, cannibalic. And uh, cannibalism is uh, very common in uh, animals. They, whenever they, uh, of course, have this problem, they start to uh, eat each other, which is very common behavior uh, also in fish. So this is one of the aspects you should really be caring about. And whenever, I would say whenever you try to uh, to kind of uh, change your regular routines uh, whenever you are going for the new change in ingredients. So you try it small first, do it as it, at a smaller scale, and then you scale it up and uh, when the results are good. And this is very important aspect. Another thing you have to uh, also consider when it comes to selection of ingredients, uh, that is uh, digestibility of the ingredients and amino acid profile. Uh, and uh, today we can discuss a little bit about digestibility of the ingredients uh, and leave amino acid profile for another video. Uh, digestibility is extremely important uh, when it comes to selecting the feed ingredients. Uh, so higher the digestibility, better for uh, your uh, uh, feed. Uh, and overall uh, animal health and uh, its uh, uh, feed conversion ratio. So this is uh, very important. And digestibility, if, if some of you may not know about digestibility, what is digestibility? Digestibility is uh, uh, the ability of uh, the animal uh, uh, to, to digest that certain ingredient. So when we calculate digestibility, it's about that ingredient itself uh, for example, I can give you the example, if you are putting uh, soya bean, uh, that's as an example, uh, meal in the diet and the digestibility is uh, 85, 90%. The meaning of that is that this ingredient is 85 to 90% digestible to this uh, fish species. Uh, so, but this really can vary based on the quality. So you have to, of course, uh, choose the top quality ingredient when it comes to the, uh, choosing the ingredients. That's, of course, we, we, we keep that for another day. But uh, today, this is what 
uh, I wanted to discuss with you guys overall. Uh, I think I have covered all the topics which, uh, which I wanted to discuss. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I would like to also give you some, uh, uh, some uh, uh, this announcement I wanted to make that I started uh, this now two things on this channel as we have uh, more than 1000 subscribers, thanks to you guys. So we also have our this community tab uh, on the channel has been enabled and that means that now we can communicate in a much more better way. Uh, I can post the uh, different posts on the channel and you guys can always have that uh, about the upcoming videos or things like that. So uh, another thing is that uh, this we have also started uh, a thing called Patreon. You might have heard from the other chat or seen on the other YouTube channels. So Patreon is the thing that if you uh, we have a link today under this uh, video. Uh, and also the previous videos. So if you want to support this channel or if you want to become a member of this channel for more exclusive content, uh, because what I'm planning is that if I have like, let's say some members uh, who want more content uh, and live video when, where they can ask about uh, their uh, issues and questions or more detailed formulation or uh, other uh, related aspects so they we can have another way of communicating uh, and of course which it will also help to improve this channel because uh, more membership uh, can also if there is some revenue in this so it can of course helps to uh, improve the, the the outsourcing of some of the work so which could be very of course helpful for all of us so yeah uh, so thank you very much. So uh, I wouldn't take too long today. So thank you very much. I think this is the perfect length. And uh, let's stay in touch uh, and keep sending me the emails and uh, see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye bye.